Welcome everyone to the Behavioral Alliance of South Carolina. Today we are here with Amanda Morris, who is a lifetime friend of mine, but also an amazing uh, inf informative source in reference to nutrition. So she's here to share with us a little bit about nutrition and mental health and how those things go together. So we're here on our platform today called Working Through It Wednesday, and we hope that you're able to work through some things this Wednesday in regard to nutrition. As we know, there's so much information out there. Everyone seems to be an expert. There's tons of information on the internet about what you should eat, what you should eat, all those things. We can kind of get lost in the sauce on these too much information. So Amanda's here to share with us some actual research-based information in reference to nutrition. And she's also just a great person to know. So thank you so much, Amanda, for being here. Uh, I know you're from Clemson and that's okay. We are based out of the University of South Carolina. We will not hold it against you. We are partners in mental wellness. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda, for being here. I'll turn it over to you. Hi, Erin. Thanks for having me. Um, so today we are gonna be going over some mental health and nutrition. So our food choices affect how we feel. Um, what you choose to eat can directly affect your brain and ultimately your mood. And there are six major nutrients um, that the body needs in order to function. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, water, vitamins, and minerals. These are all critical to the human body um, because of the processes in the body they run based on the nutrients that we consume. Um, to better understand why these nutrients are important and what they do for the body, I'm gonna briefly go through each of them and explain their roles. So carbohydrates are your main source of energy. We need carbohydrates um, to fuel the body. Lipids, um, also known as fats, they provide energy storage. Um, fats are anywhere from unsaturated, saturated, and trans. Um, we want to limit foods that contain too much saturated fats and trans fats and consume more foods that are unsaturated. One reasoning, uh, reason being um, because it can help reduce your risk of heart disease. Uh, next, we have proteins. Those are made up of amino acids. These are like your building block um, for structures in the body. They're needed for growth, repair, and maintenance of body tissue. So water. Water is essential for all life. 60% of your body is water. Uh, water helps you stay hydrated, and it also helps transport nutrients throughout your body. Vitamins and minerals. So we've covered the three macronutrients, which are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So now we can discuss our micronutrients. Um, vitamin, vitamins and minerals are those uh, micronutrients required for the body, and they play an important role in cell and neurological functioning. Um, they're fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble vitamins. The fat solubles are A, D, E, and K. Um, and those are gonna be stored in your adipose tissue and liver, whereas water soluble vitamins are not gonna stay stored in the body and um, they will be excreted through urine. So when we're lacking certain nutrients in our diet, that's when deficiencies occur. Here are a few uh, vitamins and minerals and deficiencies and how these deficiencies can affect our mental health. Um, vitamin D deficiency has been linked to depression. Uh, studies have shown that if you get some kind of sun exposure on your face and hands for about 15 minutes a day, um, three times a week, that can significantly increase your intake of vitamin D. Um, low levels of vitamin B12 can increase symptoms of certain mood disorders. Um, this is especially important for a person who is vegetarian or on a vegan diet 
because most vitamin B12 is found in animal products. Um, and then we have zinc, magnesium, iron. Um, these are all trace minerals found in the body. Um, they're important for uh, neuro neurological functioning and they play a role in brain chemistry. Um, all three have been linked to depression and anxiety. And there have been studies and evidence showing that taking a zinc supplementation can actually help improve depression. That all makes sense. Uh, you don't think about it all the time, but it really does make sense when, yeah. when you put two and two together. If you go, if you think about it in a certain way, if you go outside, you're probably more likely to be exposed to the sun, probably more likely to um, increase your level of happiness in some ways. If you stay inside and you're locked in your same small area, you can see how they would go hand in hand with just setting, but also then you think about the vitamins that we're receiving from the sun too. That yeah, makes total exactly. sense. And not a lot of people think about it, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. when you're outside and um, yeah, just enjoying the sunshine, you're getting some vitamin D, which is great because it's synthesizing in your body. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, now that we've talked about all the nutrients in your body um, that you need to operate, um, I think that the brain gut axis is a very important topic to discuss. Um, all the nutrients that we consume enter the digestive system. Um, and they play a role in the uh, brain gut axis. So um, according to Harvard, a troubled intestine can send signals to the brain just as a troubled brain can send signals to the gut. So the microbiome, also known as bacteria, um, of the gut affects neural signals and, um, in the brain while the brain affects functions of the gut. Um, so the bacterial secretions enter the bloodstream, they travel to the brain, where they affect things like cognition and mood. So it's important to know there's good and bad bacteria. Um, while there is good bacteria, uh, certain bad bacteria um, flourish due to eating um, like particular foods. Um, and that can cause gut perme permeability changes. Um, which can lead to inflammation. And new research shows that it can eventually lead to mental ailments like depression, memory loss, and learning suppression. Um, so when you consume nutrients that benefit your body and your body's needs, it gives your gut a chance to stay healthy um, and communicate between your gut and your brain, which correlates with your mood, cognition, and mental health. Kind of like you are what you eat, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's very true. All right, so let's move on to omegas. So omega-3s, those are uh, polyunsaturated fats. I know I talked about the, the lipids and the fats. So these are the good fats. Um, so there's two omega-3 fatty acids, um, which are going to be your EPA and DHA. You'll often see these on the pill bottle whenever you're purchasing fish oil. So they are found in fish oil. Um, if you don't consume fish or if you have a fish allergy, which is very common, um, then other sources of omega-3s can be found in various oils, nuts, seeds, and beans. Um, so just to uh, further expand on omega-3s and how they tie in with mental health, um, because depression appears less common in nations where people eat large amounts of fish, so think Mediterranean diet, um, scientists have investigated whether fish oils may prevent and or treat depression and other mood disorders. Um, and then uh, omega-3s are anti-inflammatory um, they have actions that may help relieve depression. Um, and then they've also been studied um, and proposed to alleviate other uh, mood disorders like postpar postpartum depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, OCD, borderline personality disorder, and attention deficit disorder. 
that's a little bit about your um, omegas and then diabetes. So diabetes and depression, those are linked. Um, here I have a little cycle showing you um, pretty much it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Honestly, people that have uh, diabetes have depression as well. Um, when you have diabetes, it can become hard for you to manage your blood glucose levels. When it's hard to manage those, that results to poor diabetes management. Um, and that in turn can ultimately affect your mood and bring on depression because you have no motivation. Um, you have no energy. And so it's just, it's just a vicious cycle. So that is going to bring me to dieting, stress, and eating disorders. So I think that the media has painted a picture on how we're supposed to look. Um, and often we get in our heads that we need to eat a certain way in order to look a certain way. Um, and it certainly does not help when diets are being thrown at us left and right or magazines telling us, yeah, you can eat this, don't eat that. Um, so fad diets are very popular. Um, here we have keto, Atkins, juicing, detoxing. Um, so what a fad diet is, I mean, it's a popular in the sense that it's going to promise quick results that are actually not maintainable. Um, and these can cause a lot of stress on individuals um, and affects, it affects your mental health because um, you're constantly thinking, oh, I need to lose weight. Oh, I need to look this way. Um, so that can really have an effect on your mental health. Um, and then some people end up dieting to an extreme where unfortunately they develop an eating disorder and it is very common in um, women adolescents. So speaking of diets, the American diet, <laughs> it typically consists of high sugar and highly processed foods. Uh oh, Amanda, don't tell me I can't eat sugar. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. Just a little bit, right? In Just moderation. Just in moderation, exactly. That's key. Mm -hmm. um, so high consumptions of sugar can lead to ir irritability, anxiety, foggy thinking, fatigue, and insomnia. Um, and also sugar causes a release of insulin, which can lead to hormone dysfunction sometimes, and that can also lead to mood disorders. So it's not to say that you can never have sugar, just like you said, in moderation. All right, so this is me. <laughs> um, and my professor um, that I work closely with out in San Diego. So I volunteered for Feeding San Diego. There was a program called Fuel for Summer. And during the program, we had empty Gatorade, tea, and like Coke bottles. And we only filled them up with the sugar that that specific drink contained. Very good visual. So for example, Coca-Cola has 44 grams of sugar. So we would have um, the children that were a part of the program, we had them guess like, hey, how much do you think, how much sugar do you think is in this drink? And they would guess and they would get a prize if they got it or even if they were close. Um, but really what we wanted them to take away from the game was just to um, see and like visualize how much sugar is in these drinks that they are consuming. Um, so it's called Rethink Your Drink. Um, and at the end, we shared uh, cards with them on how to flavor their water. You know, just add some fruit, add cucumber, add lemon, what have you. So that was a, that was a really fun summer doing that and educating children. That's an easy reminder too, that we can flavor in different ways. It doesn't have to be sugar. It can be something more natural and fun and uh, exactly. just adding a, a, a sprig of mint or a piece of cucumber or lemon, something like that to the drink can make it fun and enjoyable to still drink it. It's not just straight water, but it's also not 44 grams of sugar. In a cup <laughs> of cola. My goodness. Exactly. Yeah. And, and when they saw that, they were like, wow, that's a lot of sugar. 
Yeah. So it was like really good to see that they understood. Oh wow, that's that's a lot of sugar I'm drinking. <laughs> Very good visual. All right. So healthy habits. Um. So just as it is important to educate children on sugary drinks, I think that it's important to emphasize on other healthy habits at a young age. Um, so planning meals um, ahead will set you up for success. Uh, it doesn't have to be a full on menu, just two or three meal ideas for the week. So you can prepare that and it can be ready to grab and go. Um, that will help um, alleviate stress and takes lots of stress away if you just plan ahead. Um, having healthy uh, snacks on hand, like baby carrots and hummus or cheese and crackers, yogurt, fruits and nuts are some examples of some little healthy snacks. Um, and they will provide nutrients um, and help prevent you from snacking on a bag of chips or reaching for something sugary and processed um, and provide more nutrients to your diet in general. Um, nutrition labels. Uh, I think those are very important. So I put the nutrition label here. They recently just changed it. Um, calories have to be bolder and larger now, serving sizes. Um, but the reason why I listed nutrition labels as a healthy habit is because I think it's a great habit to have just to see what you're putting into your body. Um, to be able to read these labels and read the ingredients. Um, and just know like the macro and micronutrients that I talked about earlier, um, know where to find those. And it just helps you to know what you're putting into your body overall, which I think is super important. Um, and then water we talked about keeps you hydrated, continues to move nutrients throughout the body. Um, and then exercise is important. Um, doesn't have to be miserable. I always say find an activity that you enjoy, even if it's with your family like biking, like I know you do yoga, that's your happiness for exercise. Just as long as you're getting your body moving, some kind of movement um, throughout the day, this can release endorphins and it just has a positive impact on your mood. Um, and then balance. So I think this one might be the most important one. Um, I always say, don't be afraid to indulge in foods that you like. Um, None of this is to say that you should restrict any kind of sugar or sweets. It's definitely balance and moderation is key um, to all of this. So just remember to keep it in moderation. You don't have to eat vegetables for every meal to be healthy. Um, in fact, it's healthy to eat foods that you enjoy, even if they are sweets and without the guilt. All right, so this is gonna wrap it up here. Um, just be aware, educate, and enjoy. Um, overall, just be aware of the foods that you're putting into your body. Um, I think it's important to educate at an early age in order to practice healthy habits and to know your body's needs. And all foods are meant to be enjoyed, some in moderation. And I really do think practicing these um, can and will help with mental health. Thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing all of that with us. You're making me hungry thinking about all the, all the good snacks that are out there. Sometimes we forget. And like you said, if we're not planning ahead, we just jump to the bag of chips or jump to the sugary sweet that's close by. But if you plan ahead and have some things ready, then you can really balance your own mental health in a lot of ways so that you're not stressed. But also, you're putting good things in your body that we can all feel good about eating. Exactly. Thank you so much for sharing these very important reminders and information with us, even if some people may have been somewhat aware of some of the things I know that we can all learn and learn the correct information. So thank you for giving us some of that and reminding us that we are healthy human beings and but we need to put the right things in our bodies and be aware of what we're feeding ourselves as well as our children. And of course, to drink plenty of water. <laughs>
Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. From uh, Clemson University, this is Amanda Morris. and We are with the Behavioral Alliance of South Carolina. Please join us next week and reminder to fill out our survey as well to let us know what more information we can bring you and how you would like to receive our information from the Behavioral Alliance of South Carolina. Have a great day.